Like, subscribe, share, and consume for better luck in your next HGA. All right, welcome back. It's just another Man Crush Monday. So, Man Crush Monday, I've got kind of a, you know, a, a different one today. So most of what I've done so far has been uh, someone that's pretty popular. Uh, this one's kind of more near and dear to my heart. And uh, I guess being more personal. And uh, this is my drink, uh, what I call a Santa my short. So for those of you that like to uh, drink with me, um, it is equal parts spiced rum, uh, Malibu rum, uh, banana liqueur, or 99 bananas if you can't find banana liqueur, uh, blue curacao, and, and then whatever you get or end up with, um, match that with uh, pineapple juice. And it's freaking amazing. But after one, you're not going to be able to drive anywhere, so make sure you don't make that if you're planning on going anywhere. Unless you make a tiny one like this. This is like a little tiny... A little tiny one. Alright, so... Today's Man Crush Monday is... Um, Mike Strawler. So, I said it was near and dear. This is... Uh, Mike was actually my... My dad's first cousin. Um... And this is what got me started back into cards in 2011 uh, and what made me uh, realize what eBay could do and as far as like looking for cards that I always wanted when I was a kid. Um, and it started with, so I don't have the actual card uh, because I bought it for my dad. Uh, but this was the, you know, without having the actual one, this was the card. So... There, you're going to see a lot of cool stuff. For for someone that had like a very limited career, uh, my dad's cousin was part of a lot of very cool things, starting off with his rookie card, which he shared with Bobby Valentine. So if you're too young to remember Bobby Valentine, when he was uh, probably most notable uh, recently, for he was a commentator, uh, but the funny thing was when he was the Mets uh, manager, he was kicked out of a game, so he was ejected from a game, and he came back to the into the dugout with fake uh, a fake mustache on and sunglasses, and uh, it's actually really funny. You should uh, check it out if you've never seen it before. Uh, but anyway, so 1971, you guys just saw this with the last Heritage uh, for 2020. That was the design they used, but for the Dodgers rookie, uh, Mike Stroller was on that. And then, so... That's my, you know, base version. And then I really like this one. This is uh, on-card autograph by both Bobby Valentine and Mike Strawler. So Bobby Valentine is still alive. Uh, unfortunately, my, my dad's cousin is not. Uh, he passed away uh, a couple years ago. Uh, but uh, back... So we'll keep going with the Dodger time. So some other really cool things that I have that I, only I have. Uh, Tops was selling all of these. Um, basically, you had um, these pictures that they never used for um, baseball cards, and they sold them as one of one. So it's from from the Tops vault. It has like a little number on it, and it's the actual picture so i have that one i have this one which was really dark there you go if you shine it like that you can kind of see in there this one so i have even i have a lot of stories about this that are pretty cool but um and i'll try to find the one picture for the last story at the end and see if i can't just slide it in there um but anyway, so, oh, I was kidding, I, I had some more, so, there was this Dell stamp uh, that he had, the 30 bucks was not something I put on there, That's, that was there when I bought it, and then I guess Target in, like, the Los Angeles area had these uh, 100, 100th anniversary of the Dodgers, and had these little pictures, I actually have, like, three or four of them in there. All right, so that's from everything from 71. 72, you've probably seen this in a previous video. Um, 
I do love, uh, and I think I talked about this before, I like PSA for vintage cards. So here you have the three, like, Ricky Stars. So I'm not quite sure how he made it into three Ricky Stars. He did have a lot of injuries, but um, there he is with Bob O'Brien and Charlie Huff, all three pitchers. So pretty cool. And that's an eight, so really nice shape considering the age. All right, so let's go 1973, or at least let's kind of approach that. So in the back, you see a picture. There's Mike Strahler, and there's Frank Robinson. So if you don't know, uh, Frank Robinson um, was the first uh, black manager in Major League Baseball, so uh, breaking big-time barriers. And that was for the Cleveland Indians in uh, 1973 or four, I believe. Uh, pardon uh, my not knowing it right off the top of my head. But another really cool story was that they were actually traded together. So Mike Strahler and Frank Robinson were both traded from the Dodgers to the Angels. And if you notice, down at the bottom, I have the 1973 Mike Strahler on the Angels and the 1973 Frank Robinson on the Angels as well. So really cool, I think. Uh, this, this little guy over here was back from Dodger time. Um, it's like a very rare miners card. And the guy that sent it to me sent, sent it to me in that block of plastic, so I never took it out. Um, but let's go. So I also have just another base 1973 because I really like this design and get excited if you like Topps Heritage this will be the next year's design and then I have one that was uh, you know Topps original archives way off center um, I like this one was centered pretty well left to right but not up and down I only got this one because it was stamped as basically a buyback and then so now we're going to get into I have one of the few uh, higher grades. I know there's there's higher than this, but eight seems to be a hot spot for me where I, I feel good about eight. It doesn't hurt my feelings to have an eight when it comes to just my PC cards. Um, if, if it's talking about something that I'm going to invest, of course I want the highest grade possible. If I think the person's going to do well, that's what's going to pay off the most. But if it comes to my PC stuff, eights in PSA, 8s in BGS, 8s in, um, and sometimes even 7s in HGA because they're so tough. Uh, SGC, you know, if it's real vintage, you guys have seen my Mickey Mantle, I have, you know, one, one and a half and twos that are just fine. They look well enough, you know, if you just want to hold it, they look fine. So anyway, this was my high grade of that. And then I like these. These are, so I probably just ruined it. I should have done like this. This is the color only, no black version of the 1973 card with the blank cardboard back. I think I got this from someone that had gotten it from Topps. Because again, Topps sells this stuff every now and then if you check on eBay. And then I have the black version. So everything that was black on the card is on this. It also has a blank back. Put them together, and you've got the card. So these should be one of ones. Uh, they are not labeled as such, but I would be surprised if anyone wasted their time printing out. And again, no offense to Mike or how he played, but that... If you're going to counterfeit stuff, I would counterfeit stuff that makes you a little bit more money. It would probably be not worth your time to do it. So, 1973 goes by. 1974, he plays for the Tigers, where there's no card. Uh, but I do have this picture that uh, I was able to acquire on eBay. Um, I know his uh, signature pretty well, so I can buy those as far as like in-person autographs without feeling like I need them. Uh, verified. Uh, it's one little skill I have, I guess, is I can tell if it's it's real or not. Uh, but then I, I did buy this. So this is not a real card. This is a ACEO or uh, the artist creation, which I haven't covered that yet in the video. Maybe I will someday. But uh, those are fine. You know, 
I'm willing to pay for those if someone puts in the time and money, but not, you know, real baseball card money because it's not worth anything except for to me. So you pay them for their time, not for potential value. And then, so the last thing and pretty cool part of the story as well. So this is a, another tops pitcher. You may not be able to see the team, but that is actually the, um, the Indians from 74. So if you don't know, I am a Cleveland Indians fan have been, um, forever. I did like the Mariners for a while there with King Griffey Jr. Who didn't, but anyway, um, so he tried out for the team and wasn't able to make it in the 74. So his friend, Frank Robinson was the manager at the time. Um, you know, he didn't end up making it, but kind of had like, you know, that was his last hurrah to try out for the Indians. And this came from tops. It's a picture of him in an Indians uniform. And, um, a lot of the people in my family didn't know. So I was not alive in 74. Um, a lot of people in the family totally forgot that he had tried out for the Indians and I was able to snag this, um, which was pretty sweet. Then uh, I happened to work with someone who, um, you know, he, he basically, uh, had mentioned that his wife worked for the Indians and, um, he said, you know, at first had offered, if you ever want tickets, I can get you tickets, but I, you know. I was like, ah, I appreciate it, but I'm not going to, you know, take advantage. But then I thought, you know, I did want to get my dad a, a Cleveland Indians jersey with Mike's number on it. And this doesn't have his number on it. And I couldn't find what it was. And Mike had passed away and uh, no one really knew. So I asked um, my, my friend from work, hey, you know, do you mind... Uh, seeing if you can find out what number he had. Not only did he find the number, uh, which was number 46, uh, but he did find another picture uh, with the red Indians jersey, which is like the best from the 70s, um, and, and sent it to me. So it is in black and white. I'll try and get it up here if I can find it uh, on the video. Uh, but anyway, so taking you in on, on one of my, obviously, you know, no one else is probably PC and, Mike Strawler, uh, he was kind of pitched from a very low arm angle and uh, just had a lot of really cool stuff happen for such a really a short pro career, um, at least I think. Uh, so I, I always like telling the story. But anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoy. Man Crush Monday is not obviously the, the most hit on... Uh, uh, videos, but I like them and it uh, keeps me busy and it's uh, just more practice so I can try to make more and uh, better content for everyone. So like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.